Blaze up Grifos. In today's video, we'll punch a cone on the ringneck snakes. This is going to be a roller coaster journey, so you better put on a seat belt and enjoy the ride. We'll discuss this snake, its habitat, diet, and everything chismo about it, shall we? The harmless ringneck snake, sometimes known as the ringneck snake, is a species of colubrid snake that is prevalent across much of the United States, central Mexico, and southeastern Canada. Since ring-necked snakes are nocturnal and solitary creatures, they are rarely spotted during the day. They are well recognized for their distinctive defensive stance, which involves folding up their tails and displaying their vivid red-orange ventral surface when they feel threatened. In the majority of its distribution, ring-necked snakes are thought to be fairly common However, there is no scientific evidence to back up this claim. More thorough study is desperately needed because there is a severe paucity of it regarding the ring-necked snake. There are now 14 subspecies recognized within the genus Deadophis, but many herpetologists disagree with the morphologically based classifications. Its consistent dorsal color of olive, brown, bluish gray, or smoky black is only interrupted by a pronounced neck band of yellow, red, or yellow orange. The unique neck band is absent in a small number of individuals in New Mexico, Utah, and other noteworthy regions. Additionally, individuals could have difficult to identify neck bands that are reduced in hue or only partially colored. Pigmentation might also be more cream colored than brilliant orange or red. The head usually has a darker color than the rest of the body, with a tendency to be more black than gray or olive. The snake's ventral color ranges from yellow-orange to red and is pierced along the borders by crescent-shaped black dots. However, most people still have the black spotting, even though others lack the distinctive ventral coloring. The neck band and ventral color are rarely absent in the same individual making it easiest to identify the species by these two traits. Smooth scales with 15 to 17 scale rows at the midbody are present on ring-necked snakes. In contrast to females, which often lack them, males typically have tiny tubercles on their scales slightly anterior to the vent. Distribution. In most of the United States, as well as southern Canada and central Mexico, Ring-necked snakes are fairly common. Eastern populations can be found along the whole eastern seaboard, from the Gulf of St. Lawrence to the Texas Gulf Coast. Moving inland, the distribution extends into northern Minnesota before continuing diagonally across the U.S. to include all of Iowa, eastern Nebraska, and the majority of Kansas. The distribution is much less uniform in the western U.S with sporadic, discrete population segments running over most of the Pacific Northwest. From south-central Washington, populations spread along the extreme west coast and into Mexico. Population clusters continue south through Arizona and central Mexico before moving inland into western Idaho, southern Nevada, and central Utah. Habitat. Many different types of habitats are home to ring-necked snakes. Areas with lots of cover and denning spots appear to determine preference. In open woodlands close to rocky hillsides or in wetter areas with lots of shelter or woody debris, the northern and western subspecies can be found. Particularly in more arid areas, southern subspecies are predominantly found in riparian and moist situations. Additionally, ring-necked snakes are absent from areas above 2,200 meters in height. Dens are crucial for locating suitable ring-necked snake habitat in northern areas. Dens are typically communal spaces that can be recognized by the presence of a subsurface crevasse or hole that is deep enough to prevent freezing temperatures. Being a woodland reptile, it frequently hides behind wood or other debris. When it's hot outside, they often dig themselves holes and burrows or hide beneath rocks or other suitable objects. They typically inhabit flatland woodlands. 
Ringneck snakes are not hesitant to use urbanized areas as a sanctuary from predators, despite the fact that they prefer to stay away from man-made structures. Diet. The smaller salamanders, earthworms, and slugs make up the majority of the ringneck snake's diet, although it also occasionally consumes lizards, frogs, and certain young snakes of other species. Prey species are selected based on how frequently they are present in the ecosystem. Redback salamanders are the main food source for the eastern ringneck snake populations found in Michigan. The envenomation and constriction techniques used by ringneck snakes help them capture their prey. Age, the quantity of food ingested, and temperature were factors that significantly impacted digestion in a study examining the nutritional preferences of this species. Although snakes lack a true venom gland, they do have a structure similar to one called the Duvernoy's gland that was developed from the same tissue. The last maxillary teeth on both sides of the upper jaw are longer and channeled in the majority of subspecies. The Duvernoy's gland, which is found just behind the eye, is where the venom is created. Then it emerges from a hole in the back of the maxillary tooth. In order to capture their prey, ring-necked snakes first strike it. Then they move their lips forward, making sure the final maxillary tooth pierces the skin and allows the venom to enter the prey's flesh. The prey's tendency to correct itself is strongly influenced by the secretion. The fact that ring-necked snakes rarely attack larger predators suggests that their venom originated as a means of eating rather than protection. The snake wraps up its tail into a corkscrew, revealing its vividly colored belly, rather than attempting to bite a predator. Although limited daylight activity has been seen, ring-necked snakes are generally nocturnal or very crepuscular animals. Sometimes people can be seen laying out in the sun during the day, especially on gloomy days, to warm up. However, the majority of people employ conduction with surface objects that have been warmed by the sun while lying directly beneath them to gain heat. Ring-necked snakes have some social structure despite their extreme secrecy, although the precise social structures have never been studied. Large colonies of more than 100 individuals have been found in several populations, and some accounts suggest that smaller colonies also live in the same microhabitats. Reproduction. In the spring, ring-necked snakes typically mate, but in some subspecies, mating takes place in the autumn and delayed implantation happens. By exuding pheromones from their skin, females draw males to them. When the male locates a female, he begins by tracing her body with his closed mouth. The male then maneuvers to align their bodies so that sperm can be inserted into the female's vent, biting her around her neck ring. Under a rock, or in a rotting wood, females deposit their eggs in loose, aerated soil. Early summer sees the laying of three to ten eggs, which hatch in August or September. The egg is elongated and has ends that are yellow in contrast to its white body. Juveniles are precocial when they hatch and can survive without parental supervision. Do they bite? These snakes are venomous, although the venom in their saliva is only mildly toxic and has some effect on the prey they consume. Possesses two tiny fangs as well, however, they are located extremely far back in the back of his mouth. They don't actually have an impact on people. Since their venom is weak and they use it to feed rather than defend themselves, these snakes are harmless to people. After a ring-neck snake is hunting, it will grasp hold of its victim, squeeze it, and then bite it when it has steadied. Like other snakes, it uses some of its venom and its rear-facing teeth to pierce the target, and then uses that to subdue it. Defense Mechanism The first line of defense for this snake is an attempt to flee. Additionally, it uses its rear business end to expel an extremely offensive-smelling material as another protection strategy. 
it takes several hand washes to completely get rid of that odour. Since it doesn't appear like a very excellent food item based on the scent or flavour, it is undoubtedly a deterrent to predators. Threat. Ringneck snakes use its venom to aid immobilize their victim, although they are frequently targeted as prey. The somewhat elusive species is preyed upon by a number of important predators, including eastern screech owls, Virginia opossums, blue racers, northern coral snakes, and wild hogs. Some ringneck snakes frequently twist and elevate their tails in hostile situations, pointing them squarely at the other parties as a useful back-off signal. That's all for today. Thanks for slogging it out.